Now, this is a recent portrait that I photographed and edited of my friend Steve. And because of what I did to the picture, I thought it would make a good video to cover something that we take for granted if we've been using Photoshop for a while. The basics. So in this video, I want to give you a quick look at three different ways that we can align contents of layers within pictures, which is incredibly useful. Okay, so I've got these two images here, one where I've added all this dirt, grime and blood onto Steve's fisherman overalls, and this one here of Steve before that was all added. Now, when I look at this image of Steve, the detail of his face looks a little bit soft compared to this one. So what I want to do is a head swap, which means I need to put the images on top of each other in the layer stack and then use a layer mask. So the first way I could do this is to simply use the move tool from the toolbar. And I don't actually need to do this, but just so you can see the layer moving, I'll tap on the padlock to unlock the layer. Then I'll click and drag the sharp version up onto the tab containing the other image and wait until it opens. When it does, I'll then hold down my shift key and drag onto the image and then let go. Now, because the two layers are pretty much identical due to Steve standing still and it being photographed using a tripod, they do line up really well already. However, if they didn't, let's just move this one a little bit. One way you might try to line them up is by lowering the opacity of the layer on top and then dragging it around until it kind of looks like it should be lined up. And then you'd set the opacity back to 100. Another way to check that the layers line up is by using the difference blend mode. So what I'll do is change the blend mode of the uppermost layer to difference. When I do, anywhere that is black tells me that there is identical pixels between the two layers, which also means that layers line up with one another. If when I'm using the move tool, I then use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge the upper layer a bit, you can see when they don't line up. But if I move it back, you can see that the majority has turned black. Then I can change the blend mode back to normal. I would then add a black layer mask to the top layer containing the sharp face detail by holding down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and then clicking on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. This hides the content of that layer. So lastly, I would just grab a soft round brush and a white foreground color and simply brush over the area of that layer I want to show through, which in this case is Steve's face. So that worked great, but there is also another way which works really well and really fast. Okay, so let's remove the layer mask by dragging it onto the trash can, and then I'll use the move tool to just move the upper layer so that it's definitely not aligned with the layer below. Now, what I can do if I do want the content of the top layer and the layer below to perfectly line up is to click on one layer in the layers panel, so that it's highlighted, and then hold down the Shift key and click on the layer that I want to line it up perfectly with. You can see now that both of the layers that I want to line up with each other are active. Then I simply go to the Edit menu and choose Auto Align Layers. When I do, I'm presented with these settings, and I'm going to make no changes whatsoever. I'll just leave it in Auto and click OK. And when I do, the layers are perfectly aligned. I can also check it using the difference blend mode if I want to, and yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Now, the really cool thing about using the auto align layers command is that it will also automatically resize and rotate the layers so that they line up perfectly. Let me show you. Okay, so let's do this. I'll delete the top layer so that now we have two separate images again. I'll go to the sharp image and get the crop tool and crop this image down, making sure that delete cropped pixels is on in the options bar. I'll also rotate the image a little. So something like that. 
I'll also make it smaller. So I'll go to image, then image size, and make it smaller. There we go. Now I'll get the move tool and drag this layer onto the other image. And straight away you can see it's smaller and the angle doesn't match with the other layer either. But no problem. I'll make sure that the layers are active in the layers panel by holding down the shift key and clicking on the other layer so they're both highlighted, meaning they're both active. Then I go to edit, auto align layers. I change no settings, I click OK, and it's done. I can then check with the difference blend mode. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. So I'll just add that black layer mask, and then brush in the face detail. And we're done. So there you go, nice and quick, nice and simple, but something for you if you're new to Photoshop, or maybe you just didn't know about that function at all anyway. But let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos covering this kind of stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Sometimes it feels like you're creating in silence. Just you, your camera, and the glow of your screen. But something's missing. A connection. A community. But now you've found it. This is the Photography Creative Circle. Inside, you'll find a classroom, live calls, feedback sessions, a member map, meetups, and a thriving forum that never sleeps. And every month brings new workshops, expert talks, and community challenges to keep you learning and inspired. The Photography Creative Circle is a worldwide community, providing a safe space for creatives to connect, share, get feedback, grow, and building friendships. Join us today with a seven-day, no-commitment-free trial and start your creative journey. It'll be great to have you part of the community.